So now we can just head into our browser and just search for a Pac-Man map. So you'll notice one thing that the map itself is not exactly square. Of course, this will depend from game to game. For Pac-Man, this is the case. So this is, uh, I believe, 31 by 28. So if we grab our calculator over here. So we have 31 divided by 28. So this is 1.107. And if we put the proportion of this, so that's 372 by 336. So 372 by 336. You see, we get the exact same number. So this is the right proportion. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and save this image. Generally, what I like to do is under the project file, I usually like to create another folder called extra files. And this is the directory where you know I'll store all the images. So I'll just name a folder called reference images. Of course, we'll probably have only one, but it's good to stay organized. So reference images. And now over here, I can go ahead and put this. So I can say Pac-Man map. All right. So now head into the modeling menu over here and you can select a box. So I'll place it exactly at zero. Uh, we can we can change that later. I guess it's slightly misaligned uh, But first of all, I want to change the size So if we take a look at this the height is slightly more So what we can do is this is not the height. This will be the width actually Because look this is the y-axis y-axis is the horizontal axis. So this is actually the width So and this is actually the forward axis the x-axis the red line whatever you see so if you want to increase the width, it's going to be more towards the Y axis. So we can change the axis, but just for uh, ease of use, we are going to stick to this convention, whatever's there on the map. The top view is tilted 90 degrees, so that's fine. So what we can do is for the width, we can set it to something like uh, 28 times, I don't know, maybe 100 is what I can set it to. And here I can set it to 31 times 100. You can perform multiplication here, no problem. And now if I take a look at my actual character, so I'm not sure where my character is. So I'll head back and add it. So I'll head back and I'll add my third person character. All right. So just for a sense of scale here. Now if I head back into my modeling mode and create a box, the size should be retained. So add zero, zero. So I think this is okay. So this size should be fine for the entire Pac-Man map. So if we just have a look, so this seems about right. We'll not worry too much about the proportion. We can adjust the speed to match for that. So we can hit accept. And now if we head into a perspective mode, it's just there since it's a box, doesn't really matter. Now what we'll do is we are going to import it. So under your content, uh, generally, uh, I like to create another folder called content inside this content folder. But if you don't like that nested hierarchy, uh, what we can do is we can do it here itself. So I'll just call it references, reference. And here I'm going to import that image. So under Pacman RTX extra files, I can go ahead and import this. So as you see, it's not visible. So let's take a look why that's because the format is WebP. What you can do is you can open up uh, a different image or you can open it with a software such as GIMP. So I'm going to open it with GIMP and I'll just export it as a PNG. So that works as well. So I'll open it with GIMP. It should take a quick second and now if I hit control shift E I should be able to export it as a PNG. I don't recommend JPEG because that's lossy compression and maybe a few edges are going to be jagged and stuff. Okay so we have the PNG now we can go ahead and import it. So you can of course if you don't have GIMP you can just choose another image with the right proportions that works as well. Open it up. And now what I can do is I can just drag this over here. And now, as you see, we get an accurate representation of the map. Now, this is what we'll be using as a baseline to kind of model our actual map. Obviously, this will not be the final map. 
now one more problem which you might notice is that now the texture is not actually completely there on the screen you guys remember the proportion right 31 divided by 28 that was the ratio of our texture what we can do is under our v tiling so under our v tiling because this is our horizontal axis right so under our v tiling we can go ahead and type in 1.1074 whatever that value was i guess it was 1074142 sorry and now if i were to apply the changes and head back you would see that now the map is proper so now the side walls are aligned correctly and now we can start modeling the actual map now to make the walls themselves we can head into the top view of our modeling mode so our our viewport and over here what we can do is we can change this to unlit so that we can just see the texture but the lighting won't be affected and head into mesh uh, not mesh sorry model polygroup edit and we should have an insert edge loop option and what you can do over here is you can align this properly to where the walls are so i'm going to take it right in the middle of the wall over there I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. So right in the middle where the wall is. So this will be one of our edge loops. And over here as well, I'm going to do the same exact thing. So I'm going to select this. So let's go ahead and do that over here. So exactly in the middle where the wall is. So these will be our outer walls. Of course, we need more number of edge loops to accurately define the map. So over here we can go ahead and add an edge loop exactly where this is and exactly where this is. So this is a repetitive process. If you guys want you can skip ahead and try this yourself but I'll be showing you guys nonetheless. Alright so this seems to be done and over here as well we can add an edge loop to finish this wall. Alright same thing goes over here. So right in the middle of this you can add two edge loops. Now over here we can add the edge loops for this wall. Repeat the same. So the accuracy doesn't really matter over here to be completely honest because I mean these are all minute. These will probably be in order of millimeters or centimeters if we commit any errors. So it doesn't really matter. So again just see uh, how much you really want to spend time on this. So go ahead and do that. So these two should be fine. And this line is already aligned. So I'm pretty happy with that. And this one as well. It seems to be aligned but not quite. So I'm not sure what this line was for. So this line was for this. So we need a separate one. So this is not quite there. So go ahead and do that. So this one is settled as well. Now over here, you can select this. And I guess we're done with the top row, not quite. So select these two. I guess those are already aligned. Now let's head, head in here. So for this one, we can go ahead and align this like this and like this. And we need one horizontally as well for this notch. I guess we already have it for this. And over here as well we can go ahead and insert an edge loop. Well undo that. We need one edge loop over here. We need another one over here. So this one is settled. We need one for this and for this. So one thing you might notice is that uh, as we uh, model these edge loops, uh, some other parts of the map are also getting modeled off. This is due to the alignment. All right, so now for this, we already have one over here and we need one or rather few for these walls. So this wall is not exactly aligned. So we are going to make a new one here. So create one here, create one here. 
and we have one horizontally over here as well so select this so we need one vertically over here as well as over here same goes for this all right so this wall is done now we need one over here i think this is vertically already set up so this part of the map is done i guess this box got covered along with the other edge loops now time for this time for this this map isn't really going to be expensive you know computationally graphics wise there's not going to be much to draw so nothing much to worry over here so even if you add a bunch of additional edge loops it's totally fine so let's just go ahead and verify so we have everything for this section so this section seems to be good over here as well we have everything required for this section so this can be extruded quite easily and i hope we have this box covered so we have this box covered we have this section covered over here and we also have this so this one has all the required edge loops so we have covered this so this is just like verification okay we have not done this probably got missed off all right so if you take a broad overview you should get all the edges covered so this one is done as well and now over here as well we can go ahead and do it so if you see you should not have any blues like this so if you see any blues it means you have not covered it so i don't see any blues so i'll just take a closer look so no blues over here so now we can hit on done and accept this edit and now if we head into wireframe mode you'd see that we actually have a sophisticated set of uh, tries they should have been quads but they are tries now if i head into perspective nothing much would have changed now what we can do is we can head back into the top view and we can start selecting the faces themselves so i can head into the top view 